it benefits the church by myself, by me doing that, by me giving the money I got from tax return back to the church. Okay. Uh Some may say, oh, you're overdoing it. I'm looking at it like this. My church, my congregation, we do a program called Operation Christmas Child. Uh, In November, we we do parking for um, living water. So if I could just bring in an extra $2,000 at the beginning of the year, then my congregation now has a little bit of wiggle room to do more with those uh, with those ministries. Okay. So just imagine if my entire congregation, which I think they do, did this, this motto, get all that money back from tax return and then turn around and give it back to the church. Believe it or not. And again, this is me speaking. I'm not even looking at numbers. I'm just estimating here. If the entire congregation did that, I don't think a church would ever be in the red. Mm. Okay. Interesting. And, and I'm not, I, I think I, go ahead. And I'm not saying that, you know, churches don't do this or, or people that go to church don't do this, but if every church, if every church member took the money or the credit they got back from tithing, just to tithe, I'm not saying give your whole income tax check to the church, but just what you got mm. back from the credit you got on that tithe, give that back to the church and it'll help the church either not be in the red or be somewhere closer to being in black. Okay. I see. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, if that's, if that's where um, the father has directed you, I, I'm not going to be the one to say that that's wrong um, or right for that matter. You know, that I think that's up to uh, personal conviction and, and carefully considering and praying. Um, and I think I, I may have slightly misunderstood your question. So with the tax return itself, um, that's going to be a portion of your income that the government withheld from you. Correct. And they withheld more than that, but they gave you some of it back. And so if you were going to give 10% of that, then you would give exactly that. You would give 10% of it because it's still a piece of your income. So I don't know that I would say give all of it. Um, all of the tax return. And I think you kind of clarified that toward the end of what you were saying. Yeah. Just whatever you get credited for, you know, like I said, if I, if right. I gave 2000 and I'm getting that 2000 back, then that 2000 is going back mm-hmm. to the congregation, you know? Mm-hmm. And again, and if you can't afford it financially, and if you, if you're screaming financially, then pray about what you can give. Um, right now at first I would never claim my donations, my offering, like I, I give to a few ministries and I would never claim it on my taxes until a bookkeeper told me that's the dumbest thing you could not do. And I'm like, why does it matter? And not thinking, I'm like, it's going to go back to the church anyway. And she's like, exactly. If you're going to, if you don't claim it, you can't give it to the church. But if you claim it, you can give it right back to the church. And I'm like, I'm going to start doing that. So that, so yeah. I started claiming it on my on my income tax return, and then I started giving that portion back to the church. Hmm. You know, and like I said, I feel if 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 it's just me doing it, then if I can write a two thousand dollar check and give it back to the church, then I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna continue to do it. That's my conviction. But if if I think every church member did it in that particular congregation, then the operation of that church and its functions would probably never be in the red. Or mm, again, see. not close to being in it or in the black or whatever, or close to being in the black. Right. So that's my take on uh, tax returns and stuff like that. Oh, well, there you go. All right. So do I donate 10% of my income before or after taxes? And do I factor um, in? Go ahead. Okay. And the second part of that question is, and do I factor in income from like side jobs? Okay. So I probably differ um, than, you know, than a lot of people, but I I personally say, do your giving after tax with after tax money. And the reason is um, I personally view government taxation primarily as as a form of theft. Um, I, I don't think that it's fair uh, I understand the reason that the government takes some money, you know, to upkeep streets, to, you know, pay um, people that work for government like yourself, all those types of things. But I think there's a line and I think the government crosses that line. And so um, since you're not getting that money anyway, since it's never even actually coming into your hands, I would say do not give 
a portion of that money because it's actually not your money. It's being taken away from you. Um, but like we just discussed on the tax return, you can also give a portion of that when you get that back because that is income that you've been given back that the government was withholding from you. And then as far as the, the side hustle, any kind of money that you're having come in from that, same thing. Yeah, that's, you know, that's income. Whatever is coming into your house, you give your portion from that. All right. Perfect. And if America was wealthy, and I'm saying that lightly, uh, and everybody mm-hmm. had side jobs and side hustles and legal, that is legal side hustles. Let's clarify that. Right. Uh, <laughs> and yeah. and everybody gave a 10% of their normal income and then a 10% of their side hustle legal. Then economy or economically, the country would thrive or the community you're in would thrive so much more. The church you're in would be able to do missions more. My church is small and we have a heart for missions. So just imagine if, you know, sure. Everybody just gave, like everybody had a side job and they gave 10% of both of their incomes, you know? Yeah. Like, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just thinking about that. Well, it's really it's it's almost pathetic how much um, all of the income earners in America give as a whole. So some of us give, you know, way beyond, and some of us don't give at all. And so the average tends to be um, like what I last heard was somewhere around twenty one hundred dollars per year per household. I mean, that's just you know, for in in some cases that's good. In some cases, if, uh, you know, someone having a low income and, and things like that can give $2,000 a year, well, there you go. But if you're making, if you're making $20,000 a year, that's your 10% right there. But right. if you're making, you know, 50, 60, 80, 90, a hundred, you should be doing a lot more. You should, you should be giving much more than, than you may be. And so, um, definitely, boosting the economy, changing lives of people and being a prime example and things like that through giving, um, that's going to change the culture that we live in as well. And I think we could all step it up, uh, more than, more than what we currently do. Right. And not to get too political. I do think the government can shut down some of these programs and reallocate funds. And that, that's oh, a whole, man, we, yeah. dude, if our, if our government, if, if the country would stop borrowing and stop getting themselves into such financial trouble like we've been talking about, um, you know, if we could destroy this whole idea of how we live in this culture financially and completely reframe it to structure it to being responsible and not paying for things with money that we don't have. And, you know, if we could avoid all these traps that we get into, the government could get completely out of the welfare business. Yep. Yep. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> I mean that's it. You know? uh, I'm not gonna go any further because I feel a very certain way about welfare. But anyway, <laughs> what does it mean to be a cheerful giver? Well, it means that when you give, you do it with cheerful generosity. You are exponentially generous, and it brings you joy. Okay. All right. I'm writing that down because that's that's quote worthy right there. Now, how can how can one become a more cheerful giver? So this is the this is the the depth of the previous question you just asked. Um, When we look at giving, we have to understand a lot. A lot of people, especially secular world without um, any kind of spiritual or religious frame of mind, they're going to say, what do you mean? Give some of my income away. I work really hard for it. Right. Um, we, we need to understand again, how money affects us, how it changes us. Um, money is a magnifier. So whoever's holding the money and whatever characteristics you have, it's going to magnify those. The more, the more money you have, the more it's going to magnify who you are within your character. If you're mean, it's going to magnify how mean you are. If you're extremely generous, it's going to magnify that. And so, Understanding that is going to be extremely important. And the way that we're going to become a cheerful giver is we need to understand that if we have a closed hand, we've got our money in our hand and our hand is closed and sealed tight. None of the money can get out. And we might look at that and say, well, that's good. We're holding on to it tight. But also we need to understand 
no more money can get in hmm. either, right? If you've got a clenched fist, no more money is getting in there either. Whereas if you've got an open hand, yeah, money's getting out and you're giving it away open-handedly. But also more money can come in when your hands are open like that. So there's okay. there's a really good balance between giving and receiving. And the, the cheerful giver is not going to be forsaken by the Father. You're not going to – you don't have to worry when you give. You are going to be replenished and taken care of by the Father. And if we go back to the scriptures, again, all of it belongs to him anyways. Right. He's abundantly rich. Right. Absolutely. I, it, I look at it like this. The money I own, it ain't mine. It's his anyway. Mm-hmm. Because he's the one that spoke. Exactly right. And, and I broke it down to one of my friends and they're like, well, it's my money and I work hard for it and this, that and the other. And I said, well, you believe in God, right? He's like, yeah. I'm like, okay. Then the very money that you own is not yours. It belongs to God. He's like, well, how? I said, well, let me finish. It belongs to God because the very fabric that made that money, God spoke into existence. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. so God owns it no matter if you like it or not. So just give it back to him. No matter how you look at it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it ain't yours. Get over it. <laughs> so, yeah. And we, we have to understand that the blessings that come into our life, um, they, they come from the father. And if he decides to let us keep those blessings, great. If he decides to keep those bless or take those blessings away, great. Um, but what we need to understand is that, like what you're saying, we are managers of his resources. They're not our resources, and we're not holding on to them with clenched fists, scared to lose them, and, and trusting in our own efforts and, and the money that we've made. We're trusting in the giver. And by doing that, we have open hands, and we become givers, and he replenishes, you know, X, you know, 10X. He replenishes what we give. Absolutely. You know, and if we can be good stewards of his resources you know i mean Mm -hmm. let me know when you speak something into existence and then i might be a good steward of what you spoke into existence (laughs) you know (laughs) i don't mean to be cynical but um i've never been one to be tight with money if you will i'm I'm always a generous giver um Mm -hmm. i try to be at least now i i've done some things in the past that because of my generosity it broke me but Mm. You know, uh, do I regret it to an extent, but for the most part, no, I don't, um, because, yeah. And and that's where we, that's where we get to, you know, carefully considering and prayerfully considering things. And, and especially even more so when you're married, um, because, you know, if, if the father's calling you to give every single dime that you have away, by all means do it. Absolutely. And again, understand that it's his and what he's calling you to do with it, do that. But on the other hand, we have to balance and weigh in, you know, what we're responsible for, who we're responsible to. And we have to test the spirit that we think is, is guiding us. We're told to test all spirits. And so if we can prayerfully consider things and take it to the scriptures and it turns out to be something that is of God, by all means, follow through regardless of what it looks like. Um, you know, regardless of the position it looks like it might leave you in, we have to step forward in full faith. Absolutely. I wholeheartedly agree with that. That's not, and that's not an excuse to be, um, that's not an excuse to be irresponsible. So there's, again, there's balance there. Right. Now, the last question uh, that I have is, and we kind of answered it, is how do we become more thoughtful and responsible about how we use our money? Well, again, you know, if we're if we're sitting down and we're considering what has to be taken care of as far as our survival, as far as giving, um, all those types of things, and we're budgeting those out, then we're going to be a lot more thoughtful and responsible, right? Because if we're sitting down and we're racking our brain about things that need to be covered as far as obligations that we have, whether it's vehicle registration or as far as basic survival, like, you know, buying food. Uh, that's going to cause us to be more thoughtful with the way that we use our money and also more responsible. Whereas if we're just, we say, okay, we make this much money and we have, we're only considering a few expenses. Well, we got, we've got our mortgage and our car payments and um, our, you know, a few bills, and then we can just go and spend the rest however we choose. Well, that's really not responsible. So by having 
like we've constantly talked about, by having your consistent, diligent, accurate budget, you're going to be much more responsible with the use.